Last night, no doubt about it, especially at the top, Andrew McCutcheon. He can fly, he can drive it. It's brought to you by Blippi. It's Young, it's Jones who's slugging it. Brian Doman, Steve Pierce, Brandon Moss, Andy LaRoche, Ramon Vasquez, and Zach Duke. Here we go. We're underway from Chase Field. The first pitch to McCutcheon is low. Glad to have you with us tonight. 1-0 the count. Petit eight shots at it as a starter this year. 0-4 with an ERA over seven. But as Miggy takes that mask right off, last time out pitched a lot better, Yusmero Petit. Yeah, he controlled the game. Controlled the strike zone against a formidable lineup in St. Louis. He was good. Didn't get a, ended up, didn't end up getting the win, but gave him, he gave him and, and his team a chance and didn't work out for him, but he kept him in the game. 90 pitches, six innings, two runs allowed. It was a two to one loss as that fastball runs in to Andrew McCutcheon. Nothing wrong with that in that fifth slot. Reynolds even with the bag at third with just one strike. And ouch, fouls that one off his foot. Well, you look at what this young man has done thus far out of the gates, Matt Williams. Seems to be that it was worthy of a number one pick in 2005. Yeah, good speed, good outfielder. We saw a little bit of power the other way last night. Yeah. No, he's not a very big guy. He, he got a, a cut fastball from Dan Heron and drove it to right center. Pretty much like that, but that one a little bit further off the end of the bat. That one was up. That's tough to do a whole lot the other way with that pitch. Let's take a look quickly at the Diamondbacks defensively. And as you saw right there, and we'll talk more about the homers, these guys are the busiest. From Petit's on the mound, the outfielders. The infielders of Reynolds, Drew, Roberts, and Tracy Roberts gets the start against the lefty and Miguel Montero. Well, he plays just about every single day. And he likes it. So do the numbers. Yeah, they do. How you been, pal? Good to have you back. I'm good, man. I'm good. Good. Been watching the games from home. Oh, I'm sorry for you. Well, you take a ribbing on occasion. Well, I've been communicating with Gracie from time to time. Change up is a strike. One and one to count to Dell when young. We'll have you over the weekend. We'll have you next weekend in New York City. Oh, the Big Apple. That's a slider. It's high. Two and one the count to Young. The numbers we're talking about, Petit. If even if you look at this year, 48 ground ball outs, 58 fly ball outs. But throughout his career, he's just a fly ball pitcher. I like him down there. That's at the knees. Two and two the count. Uh, even if he is down there, his fastball doesn't move much. Pretty straight. Doesn't have any sinking action, which will dip underneath the bat head. Perfect pitch. Locked him up over the inside corner. Well, you can throw the ball in the corners like that. It doesn't have to sink. Oh, you bet. Guy that doesn't get a right lot of strikes right. looking, especially strike threes. That one kind of came back to the plate, started in off, and ran back to the corner. Nice job of framing that up by Miguel Montero. He'll take it. Home plate umpire tonight is Jim Reynolds. James Hoy is at first. Tim Welke is at second. And Todd Tishner is at third as the pitch is up and away to Garrett Jones. Seven and a half seasons this young man toiled in the minor leagues, blocked in Minnesota. He's gotten his chance. Just some of the numbers. Look what he's done with his chance. Change up in a dandy. One and one the count. Had two great at bats against Dan Heron last night. One. Took a hanging cutter that was up and away from him and drilled it to left field. Not a whole lot of folks in the National League handling Dan Heron. A changeup, an aggressive swing, and a good pitch. One and two, the count. Well, you can say that again. Leads the majors with nine home runs hit during the month of July. Last bucko to lead the majors all alone in home runs in a month, Willie Starch. Boy, he is hitting here at Chase Field. Goodness gracious. Now he's hitting everywhere. You look at a guy like that and you say, okay, he's got fantastic power. We saw the ball last night to left field. He just got a another changeup that was hanging up in the strike zone and did what you're supposed to do with it. Didn't try to do too much with two strikes, just drilled it back up the middle and got himself on base. 
He's played at a couple of spots, played in the outfield, played at first base. Big shift to pull as the slider is high for the switch hitter batting left handed, Ryan Doman. Boy, remind, that guy reminds me of a couple of years ago, some young third baseman for the Diamondbacks that came to the big leagues and was just as hot as could be when he first got here. Uh huh. And he's still here. Yeah, he is. Doing pretty well, I might add. Is Mero Petit looking for him to do what he did last time, take those six innings and take him to the house? Bullpen has had to work quite a bit of late. 15 and two thirds innings the last four games. Runner goes, bouncing ball out front. I'll tell you one thing the usage of that pitch so far, the changeup has been exceptional. It's good. It makes his fastball even better. His fastball is it's not overpowering, but if he can be effective with the changeup, like this one running down and away a little bit from the left handed hitter, it makes the fastball look faster to the, to the hitter, more effective. As a slower curve ball that he is almost kicked to the curve. He uses the changeup a lot more this year than any other year in his career. He'll go fastball about half the time. And then the other half is a combination of sliders and changeups. Well, and in his position, being that swing guy, you know, you try to, I would imagine, try to limit your pitches as much as possible. That's and you just slider. don't know how consistent it's going to be. And you're exactly right. Boy, the ship looked nice there, didn't it? Zach Duke, clock in, please. Hear from our umpiring crew quite a bit tonight, especially from Tim Welke, the crew chief. There's Tim. Handshake right there. And the lineup they exchange looks a little bit like this. And Rich Donnelly, good man as well, good baseball man, Southwest Airlines. I made my day that shot right there. Steven Drew at the top. You can see what he has done as a leadoff hitter. Then it's Roberts, it's Justin Upton, and Mark Reynolds, the focus of our subject tonight. Miguel Montero, Gerardo Parra, Chris Young, Chad Tracy, Yusmero, Petit. 26 year old left hander, Zachary Thomas Duke. He is 8 and 9 this year, but a good ERA of 3.38. He's pitched effectively. Throws a little bit across his body. Left handers will feel like he's stepping at him. Yeah, the key, the key to his success with. A fastball that's 88 to 90 is location. And if he's got it, he's tough. This is in a changeup and a curveball. And like Petit, he is a pitcher that well, will have the ball put in play quite a bit. He's a guy that uses his defense. Steps a little bit toward the left handed hitter and throws across his body. Buried that pitch in. Ramon Vasquez is there and he makes the play. Jack Wilson still. Bothered by that hamstring. Let's take a look at that defense. Sands for Jack Wilson. Sands, Freddie Gonzalez. Moss, McCutcheon, Jones, LaRoche, Vasquez, and Young as the rumor mongers start to crank things up with Pierce at first. 
Zach Duke, Ryan Doman. Now, Ramon Vasquez was the guy that was pursued by the Diamondbacks this winter. It came down to Vasquez and Lopez. And he got time wise a little bit more of a commitment from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Lee Pay did good work when he was here. He's now in Milwaukee. He did. He played well. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Didn't talk about Maddie, and I apologize. That, right. that closed up, almost stepping closed stance towards. Does that affect a right hander at all? Depends. It depends on whether Duke can get the ball into the right hand. His tendency is to not be able to get the ball inside. So if he has trouble, it's leaving the ball out over the plate. We'll watch it tonight. If he's if he can throw far enough across his body to get the ball into the right-handed hitter, then he's much more effective. So if you close yourself off, that's a long way to go to get to that inside corner. You really got to work to get it there. So we'll watch that. As that one is away, change up just Whoa. flips it into the seats, does Ryan Roberts. Now, the one thing we know that Roberts loves having a lefty out there, hitting 311 against lefties. Yeah, he's done, he's just had a, a solid year. Played anywhere they wanted him to play, been effective when he's gotten in there. And he certainly, if you know him at all, he looks forward to every opportunity to get out there on the field. That one back and it's down below. Uh, not a good play down there. Took a look. I had the contract ready. Took a look. Uh, is, uh, is there a limit on how many I can give out? Well, I, I spoke to the boss today for the game. No. Yeah. No. Oh, good. Boy, that's the pitch you're talking about. He nearly got a strike. That's a good pitch right there. Yeah, regardless of whether that's our. A strike or a ball. He's looking to nip the inside corner there for strike three, but it's effective because what does that do to a hitter? It makes him conscious in there. Oh boy, and it sets him up for a big sweeping breaking ball. That's strike three. There you go, young pitchers out there. You don't always have to throw strikes to be effective. The fastball in set up that breaking ball. What it does to the hitter is makes them conscious of that ball inside because he knows. Boy, that was almost strike three, so he's conscious of the ball inside. Sets up the off-speed pitch. Now he works against Justin Upton. Upton also monster numbers against left-handed pitching. That one is low. Justin last night had a big night. He needed it. Two for four, a homer. He drove in three. My birthday present to Boone. Bouncing ball this line out to short. Is on across to Steve Pierce. Duke settles in, sets him down. One, two, three. Life. Great taste. Less filling. Back at the ball yard, all geared up and ready to go for the second inning. The Pirates 
A single by Garrett Jones in the first, the lone hit in this game. And now Steve Pierce, who takes low. 1 0 the count. Pirates had a couple of seasons where they loved coming to Chase Field. That change up flutters high. Between 0 3 and 0 5, they were 7 and 3 here. Well, last 10 games here, 2 and 8. Arizona taking the wood to the boys from Pittsburgh a little bit more. Good pitch. Well, you got to look out for a young team. You look at this club that is in the first base dugout, and you go, who are these guys? But you know what? A young team with confidence, very dangerous. Dangerous change up there. Two and two the count. That by far, although he's located some good fastballs, that has been his A-plus pitch so far. I like it. You know, you, that, that's the M.O. for a young club. Young players get to the big leagues because they can hit the fastball. Got him over the inside corner, rung him up. Jim Reynolds behind home plate. Left fielder number four. What made that pitch effective right there? The changeup. The changeup. Right before it are Brown and Brown, and of course Arrowhead, Superstition Spring Chevy dealers. They sponsor our key to the game. And it's a good one. It's a good one. I'm going to have Matt maybe take a shot at it. It's let's go for seconds. I think that's a, a fabulous, fabulous one. Well, uh, you know, on the surface, what that means to me is going back for another round at the dinner table. Did you do that tonight? Oh, so you want to bring that up again? Well, I was just asking. See, folks, a lot of I, times I had I had a nice plate of food. I saw the that. Yeah, I saw that nice plate of food. He's not afraid to go back for seconds. I saw it all. Ah, you really enjoyed your meal. How about you? Get on the hands. It's rolled foul. No, I uh, had to be on a game show. Oh, really? Yep. And I was. Yeah, I enjoyed it, but uh, no dinner for me tonight. Well, that's a. That's all right. So you bringing up "Let's Go for Seconds" as your guest to rub my nose in the fact that I haven't eaten got a little bit of an edge. It's all right. Sometimes you got to play with a little edge, you know. One and two, the count. No, I, I would imagine that. No, it's too late. Candyman, can we get him over here? <laughs> Tom? <laughs> I'd imagine that that key to the game refers to uh, Mr. Petit. That's exactly right. Explain, will you? Fly ball, right field. That was a slider up. Not at all where he wanted to throw it. Justin Upton puts it away. Brandon Moss is retired. Simply put, when you're hungry, and in that fifth starter spot, we've all been hungry for some sort of success. Technically, the fifth spot is taken over for the one spot, which isn't fair because that's in the absence of, of ace and Cy Young Award winner Brandon Webb. And they struggle. Well, when you get when you're starving for something good and then you, you get a good plate, well, you want seconds. Pete was very good last time out. So we're asking for seconds. Respectfully asking for seconds. So that is the key to the game. Well, he would not be afraid to go back for seconds tonight. Okay. I know that. Nor was I. Anyway, 0-2 the count to Andy LaRoche. There it is right there, Seth. Yummy. You know that? When you're Elvis, the demands are great. One and two the count to Andy LaRoche. I may have to head out to the ABC club. I think that's all there is to it. That one is fouled off. As a matter of fact, is let's see, got a good play there. No, terrible play. Not catching it on the bounce. Well, that's okay. What are you doing? That's all right. You know, you can't make every play. You know, you. you what is this? Sometimes you make errors. What? Unbelievable. What, would you, you want some? I have my bottle of water. I'm just fine. I'll share. The one, two. I think this is third. Actually. That misses away. Two and two the count. Nope. I'm committed to speaking throughout the game. <clears throat> Heaven knows I talk a lot. Sorry. sorry, I had my mouth full. I'm sorry. I, that was wrong. The two, two. That one is away. Three and two the count. It's really good, though. 
I mean, you come over here acting like a king. Now, there's a queen. There's a princess, actually, to be correct. And a cute little princess there enjoying the ball game. 3 2 again. Not a pretty pitch, but you don't argue about it. You know what you do argue about? When you get rooked out of a solid field before you go to work. Ah, uh, that'll make me smile. <laughs> Facebook.com slash Fox Sports Arizona. We'll have the answer after the game. Post your comments there, as you can see. So Mark Reynolds. Now's that one back. A little bit of the shoulder there for Ryan Doman. And the count is 0-1. Oh, so you want to be a catcher, huh? Not an easy gig. No. They're a different breed, that's for sure. Especially him. Change of an dandy 0 and 2. The count seems to be a central theme thus far. Both pitchers and their changeups. Yeah. It's the art of pitching, right? Fastball to get ahead. Try to get the opposing hitter out on a breaking ball or a ball that looks like a strike that's not. And again, a fastball follows, just right. like Petit. Well, he worked him there. Now we saw it with. Usmero last inning where he got a hit with the fastball, came with the changeup for strike two, and then surprised with the fastball for strike three. That ball's a little bit up in the strike zone for Mark Reynolds. He doesn't like that pitch up there, but when it's close to your eyes like that, sometimes it's difficult to lay off. Montero in there, lefty on lefty. And this year, just looking at the numbers, lefty's better against Duke than righties. That one at the outside corner. I want to win the count. You look at that and it reminds you of Tom Glavin. Tom, lefties have a lot of success, had a lot of su success against Tom Glavin because it took away their best pitch, which is the change. Unbelievable. The role that he is on. He's got 24 hits alone in the month of July. That includes an all star break right in the middle. 24 Lefty hits this month, nine. hitting about 375 in July. Well, you get on a roll like this as a as a player, he's certainly seeing the ball well. But you know what? The, the most impressive thing for me is that he is, granted, he's hitting balls out of the ballpark at times, but he's getting a lot of base hits. And you can do that when you when you know you're going to get four at bats every night. He's taking advantage of it. How's that one off at home plate? Gerardo Parra. Parra last night leaned on one. Ferraro made a deposit into the pool. 
down at the end of that bat. Those fingers wrapped around the knob. Breaking ball had him out in front. It's a foul ball. Matty, where were you on that knob of the bat? We won't see it for a moment here. Par gets reset. Did you have it hanging out or did you wrap around the bottom? I had my my pinky finger in my left hand hanging over the bottom of the bat. Why? I, I felt as if I could get a little more whip with the bat head through the strike zone. If I hung my pinky finger over on my bottom hand, it felt as like a fulcrum. Like I had a little bit of whip with that bat head through the strike zone. We're so used to as youngsters when we put that bat in our hand obviously the the base of the bat comes out the bottom that was never uncomfortable for you huh it just it became comfortable it became comfortable I, I was I guess you could I would classify my, myself as a slugger sure not a average guy somebody like Mark Grace Gracie choked up on the bat he had fantastic bat control I didn't have that kind of control I wanted that if I got a hold of one that you know, I, I could do some damage with it. Gracie had a completely different philosophy hitting. He wanted to get as many base hits as he can. So, you know, hitting hitting in the lineup fourth or fifth, my job was to drive runs. Up. Fly ball on a breaking ball. McCutcheon will come on in, going back to help if he needs it is young, but it's the speedy Andrew McCutcheon erasing Gerardo Parra. And yet there's your old teammate, I guess. He defied logic most of the time with the things that he did, who choked up on the bat and still hit it out a few times and very bombs. Yeah, it's what is ever comfortable for sure. you. Um, for me, it felt good to have that knob kind of in, in my palm. Right. It made me feel like I had leverage. Some guys, it doesn't feel comfortable. Look at Chris Young. He doesn't have his hand hanging over the end of it. He wants to hit the, the get the edge of his hand against the knob of that bat so he creates leverage. Bouncing ball. And an attempt. It's past LaRoche and into left field. Chris Young with the base hit. And every base hit is a big base hit for a guy hitting below 200. Trying to climb that average up. Trying to get it back above 200. And then you hope you never go back. There we go. Boy, it is so hard. It is so hard when you get into, into ruts like that and trying to claw your way out of it. Trying to take everybody's advice, trying to do different things at the plate. We've seen Chris Young with two or three different batting stances this year, holding his hands in different places, trying to find that comfort zone, trying to find that spot where everything just kind of flows. It's hard. We're all human. We all think too much. He's in the midst of that now. Well, that is a big old bender, and it drops away. Chad Tracy getting the assignment tonight. He scorched the ball out of here last night as a pinch hitter. The guy coming off the bench, pinch hit, and wants to hit that fastball, and he got one last night. Probably not a strike, but he drilled it out of here right field. A little bit up and in, but he got the bat head to it, and there was no doubt about it. One and oh the count. Not interested in that one. One and one the count. Well, you talk about lefty success against Zach Duke. I don't I haven't seen him throw a, a change up to a left-handed hitter yet. And I would imagine coming up through the minor leagues, his best pitch is probably his changeup. So the left-handed hitters limit him. He's, he becomes fastball curveball and they take that that left-handed changeup that's so effective against the right-handed hitter away from him. You could almost probably divide evenly. He uses changeups and curveballs the exact same amount as far as doling them out. And you can tell who gets what. Yeah, it's I mean it's not easy. Like we talked about, he steps toward the left-handed hitter and it's not easy to hit. Lights it off in the left It's down for a base hit. Racing on around is Montero. The Diamondbacks grab the lead on a Chad Tracy RBI single. RBI number 28 on the year. And Young goes all the way to third. A nice job of hitting from Chad. We talked about it. We talked about Mark Reynolds in the pregame show. Getting some. 
jam shot hits or or gonzo knocks as we used to call them. It doesn't always have to be pretty. It's but that that right there is effective. Granted, he had a three-run homer last night, but that's just as effective tonight to give your club the lead. Hey, when your playing time is limited, you've had injuries over the last couple of seasons. Yeah. Can't imagine how good those hits feel. The drive-in runs with two outs and, and when the you're, pitcher on deck. When you're hurt and not playing every day, it's difficult to find rhythm. Ball looks like it's faster than it really is. A breaking ball looks like it's sharper than it really is, because you're not in there every day. Pitcher Yusmero Petit hitless this year. He struck out twice, so he does put it in play. A nice job blocking that one up by Ryan Doman. Ball. You better throw that one where you want to there. With the pitcher, you speed up his bat, you're doing yeah. him a favor. Yeah, that, that cement mixer that comes in there is just like a BP fastball. They like those. Zach Duke's fifth career start against Arizona. One and two with an ERA of four and a half. That is strike three. And Petit. Goes down on strikes. Diamondbacks don't grab a run. Big Red gets it done. West Diamondbacks live our post game show. It's part of our text poll question. We want to know what you want the topic of discussion to be between Josh Burns, Darren Sutton, Matt Williams, and Brad Steinke tonight on the post game show. Is it A, trade talk, B, the future of the rotation, C, the 2010 goals, or D, minor league talent? Text your your answer or what you want to talk about to 36929. And Josh Burns will talk about it tonight on the post game show. You can also go on to Facebook uh, right now, guys, and submit questions. And one of those questions will be asked to Josh Burns tonight on that post game show. Thank you, sir. Josh Burns in that great seat in there has in the back of his. Suite or office, as you'd like to call it. Nice plasma TV. And he was watching right along with you. Let's see, what am I going to be talking about tonight? <laughs> that was good. Leaning back, taking a peek. 2 0 the count. He'll join his post game. Wondering, what are they going to ask? That was a fun thing to think about. Well, they are. They're good questions. You look at this season. What may happen in the next few days? Look at beyond. 
what may be coming? What kind of talent is in the minor leagues? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mark Reynolds did it again. He did it again. Well, no concrete to the face this time. But nonetheless, a fantastic effort. Here's the key to that. Watch Mark Reynolds get over to the fence. He got to the fence. He got to the fence in time to be able to make a play on the baseball. He didn't coast over there. He got there. He evaluated the situation and had a chance to go ahead and stick the glove out and jump in and make the play. I think we got to give her a contract. You nailed it. That couple's getting a contract. They are getting a contract for catching Mark Reynolds. Yeah, they didn't catch the ball. They caught a ball player. They caught the third baseman. Nice go. So there is a contract going down. As part of the contract, of course, they will get a chance to be signed up. Four free tickets in the dugout box. That's part of the deal. That's very good stuff. 30% off at the team shop. We're keeping an eye out for great catches at the ballpark. Bring your glover in this case. I don't know what you'd bring to catch Mark Reynolds. Big old net. Your husband. <laughs> bring your husband. I can't believe he did it again. Now, mind you, as you said, it's his own ballpark, so he marked his territory very effectively. Well, you look at the two, the two plays we talked about, the one in Colorado, the one here. You see so many times that a, a player will drift over to the fence. Mark was on a full sprint until he got to the fence. He broke down, put his right hand out to brace himself, and was able to make the play. If he's coasting over there, trying to trying to make trying to time the catch with when he hits the wall, he'll never make it. You have to sell out, which Mark has done over the last week twice. Sell out and go for the baseball. Hard to question effort when you see that kind of effort. That's playing to win. That's just simple. It's playing to win. Bouncing ball, and it's a foul ball. A terrible play. No contract for you. Nope. We want you to bring your glove, though. We kid. We love you. We kid. We want to see more gloves at the see, ballpark. See, here's, here's the issue. He's got his glove in his left hand. And his peanuts in his right hand. Oh boy. Potentially going to go to the bag and it leaps. No, he's off the bag. James Hoy, Johnny on the spot there, says, Yusmero Petit, you weren't on the bag. We'll take a look. That's the toughest play for a pitcher, the one that's just in between. There's no way to look down at the baseball he, or at the bag as he's catching the baseball and he's got to try to feel for it. And human instinct says I missed it. I'm going to try to go back for it. And that's the indication that the umpire gets to call him safe. Oh, you're exactly right. By the time he did actually get it McCutcheon was by. Nice job and a, the right call there by James Hoy. And we talk about it all the time. And those four guys that stand out on that field are always wrong in somebody's eyes. Sure. I can't wait to get a chance to talk to them this weekend. It's yeah, going to be a lot of fun. Going to be a big part of our show tomorrow. Behind the scenes with the Major League Baseball umpiring crew. We started to build up our thoughts and information from these gentlemen sitting down with all of them yesterday. Each and every one and now mind you they come in later. They, they, they don't come in at one or two o'clock. They get here about five five thirty. They gave us a half hour of their time. Hot shot base hit right field. A lot of times there are folks who want to question the defense of Justin Upton and there's no doubt that Upton is a developing defender a high school infielder learning to play the outfield in the big leagues. But just the instincts of McCutcheon there speak to Justin Upton and I think it gets overlooked. There was no consideration to even think about going to third. No. He's made a couple of fantastic throws this year and he continues to do that pretty soon your reputation your reputation precedes you. 
So during the pregame meetings prior to each game or prior to a series, they're saying, hey, listen, we're going to go first to third unless Upton gets it clean. Speaking about getting it clean, Ryan Roberts, unfortunately, Roberts, he gets duped defensively this inning. I hate to say it, Mark Reynolds stealing the show again. This was in Denver, Colorado. This is back home with the good folks of Phoenix. Get that lady a contract. Our umpiring show tomorrow. And we will do so in just a moment. With a very close call at first base as Drew takes away. 2 0 the count. James Hoy is the first base umpire. His boss is Tim Welke. You always wonder where do you get, where do you stand, what do you look for, how do you do it, simply put. Yeah, that, it's not easy. Umpires are just, they're not even noticed in the course of a game unless there's some kind of controversy. Steven Drew, no controversy here. Over the wall, off the base of the wall. Drew racing on around, maybe thinking three. Here he goes. The throw, sliding. Out. Coming up on the rotation, the home plate umpire, Jim Reynolds. To the outfield they went to keep things in order. But Steven Drew with a double. Jim Reynolds from behind home plate makes the out call. For the responsibilities of the umpire, one of the umpires has to go out. Therefore, the rest of the umpires, there are four bases and four umpires. If one of them goes out, there's three umpires for four bases. So they have to rotate, and you see the home plate umpire all the way down to third base making that call. You look at the game at the, on the big league level, it gets really fast. So the responsibilities of those umpires are great. Silent treatment when he gets back to the That's great. Upton on the bouncing ball. His first home run.
run as a Diamondback. His second in the major leagues. He crushed this. We got a fastball. Good approach here. Knowing that he's got a changeup, that's his best pitch. Stayed on a baseball and hit it in the pool. It was his own cheering section when he got back to the dugout because nobody was going to give him any. <laughs> Here's Mark Reynolds. Reynolds, of course. Talked about it coming on the air in the second half in that seven game hitting streak. He's matched his career high. He's got 13 hits. One and one the count. And as Matty was educating us earlier, you can be on a roll with a basket full of Texas Leaguers. Sure. Statistically, but also doing the right thing. Well, I'll break all the bats you want. As long as you keep the bat in the zone, through the zone, you create good trajectory. So what I mean by that is if you get jammed or if you hit it on the end of the bat your bat angle is such that it creates a line drive as opposed to a pop up line drives that are not hit properly fall pop ups don't. And it take there three and one the count. Hitters count. Ball four that is away. So Reynolds a strikeout and now a walk. And the time since the All Star break, his on base percentage about 570. So he's walking as well. Catcher Miguel Montero. Now there's Hot and then there's Miguel Montero. Well, it's been one of the, the great improvements from Mark Reynolds this year. You know, his walk total is going to continue to increase, which will give him more opportunities to score more runs, steal more bases. You know, you look at it, you said it. He's got a chance for 30, 30, 100, and 100. I don't care who you are, that's a serious year. Huh. Kirk Gibson, timing just about everything with that stopwatch, isn't he? Walked in the clubhouse today and said, Gimme, give gimme, give gimme Zach Duke. He said, Well, you know, he's he's got five steals, four thrown out. We're gonna pick our spots tonight. We've got some tendencies on him, we've got some keys. I think they don't study every single pitcher that goes out there. They give you yeah, look at Gibby. He's intense. He's completely intense about this right now. Gibby motioning over to Lorenzo Bundy that he feels like he's going to throw over there again. That one down the line. He didn't have time and it bounces. Rolls all around. Earlier in the dugout this evening. Look at getting this base stealer ready. Let me show you something, kid. Here's how you do it. <laughs> Boy, is that great stuff. <laughs> oh. You know, baseball players have a lot of time in their hands. Yes, they do. Outside. One and one the count. He's got a lot of time in his hands. He does. So he's got the pitcher coming to the plate. He could do a quick split and then the catcher throw in a second, correct? Yeah, you figure the catcher, a good throw was two seconds from the time it hits his glove to the time he gets to second base and hits whoever fields it. So you look at that and then you look at, at the pitcher's time from the time that he breaks his set to when it gets to the catcher and they combine those two. They know, you know, on average that, you know, 3.2 seconds is something you yeah you may want to think again about stealing but if he's three five three six you got a good chance you pick your spots and go pitcher to plate target time about 1.4 yeah catcher to second the two you talked about which of course runner to second equals 3.4 you get right. all those kind of median you, co you combine all of those in the course of the game and and given the situation of the game, and then AJ decides whether they want to try it. Out front of a breaking ball there popped up. Steve Pierce is there. Now, shh. Everyone. What? Oh, oh, silence. Hey! Hey, I hit a home run.
contribute. So, uh, you know, obviously it's a first home run for the year for him, and uh, and the guys were into it and wanted to give him a little bit of silent treatment. It's great. You know, you look at the, the bullpen the last few games, A.J., and you've got Yusmero going tonight, maybe on a limited pitch count. Do you worry about the bullpen, or do you just have to go with what the game presents to you? No, I think we have to go with what the game presents. I mean, one thing in the last uh, week or so, our bullpen stepped up and, and got some zeros when we need it. So if, if Petit can go six, seven innings like he did in, in St. Louis, I feel confident we have to close that out. Qualls hasn't pitched in a couple of days. Rouch is good to go today. Vasquez has gone three days rest. And Sean Weiss is on one day's rest. we got plenty of bullpen in case we need it. AJ, thank you very much. Best right. of luck. We'll see you later. Isn't that a treat to be able to do that for our fans? Oh, it's great. You know, you get to get inside the the brain of the manager. You, you, we talked about the bullpen and the amount of innings they pitched over the last week, and the, the the manager and the staff think completely differently. They know who's got rest. They know who's feeling good and who isn't, regardless of how many innings they pitched this week. So it's nice to get inside his brain. Mark McClune ready to give away a big league contract. Big Mac, take it away. Yeah, Luann Metcalf tonight, along with the, the rest of her family, husband Johnny and, and, and uh, son-in-law, daughter, and a granddaughter. Here's the contract for making the catch on Mark Reynolds. What was going through your mind as you saw Mark Reynolds coming at you? Well, I thought the ball was going to hit me, and I was watching the ball, and he landed in my lap. <laughs> Mostly it was a relief that the ball didn't hit me, and he did. <laughs> but, well, I know you're from Roswell, New Mexico, able to watch games on Fox Sports Arizona in New Mexico. Do you have anybody watching? I know you have most of your family here tonight. But... Be watching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she's probably glad to know that, that her daughter is okay. Now, that contract gets you four tickets to a game, 30% off at the team shop, and uh, and have fun the rest of the night. And these aren't even actually your, your, your real seats, are they? No. No. <laughs> no, we just buy them. Whenever we can come here, and move down, move down because they were open, and it looks like you're going to be on. on uh, you're live on the game, live right here, and probably on uh, a couple of highlight shows as well. <laughs> you're famous outside of Roswell, New Mexico. Let's take it back to you guys in the booth. Good stuff. Congratulations. Speaking softly, but the words are impactful. Yeah. That, that group down there. Yeah, we, we, we are honored to, to, to give them the contract. Balls. We don't expect you to. You know, you don't always have to have pom poms. No, no. We thank Luann for. Coming to watch the game? Yeah. Saving our third baseman. Softly holding him as he was trying to get back onto the field of play. Yes, very maternal. Nice going. And very well done. <laughs> it's, funny. it's funny. She was afraid of the ball. I don't care that there's a 220-pound man <laughs> running at me full speed is going to land on my lap. Just don't let the ball hit me. Boy, good pitch over the inside to Brandon Moss. One and one to count. So we're looking for more contracts to dole them out, get those four free tickets. Yeah, folks, don't be afraid to make a play. That pitch is high, two and one the count. Brandon Moss fly to right field. Back in the second inning. He walked him off a high slider. Don't throw it there again. Three and one the count. He walked him off against the Brew Crew. Against Mitch Stetter on Wednesday afternoon. Came over in the Jason Bay trade from the Boston Red Sox. Is that one is inside. It's ball four. Well, we ask you to think along with us as we all together guess tonight's Aflac trivia Aflac. question here at Chase Field. Third baseman Andy LaRoche. Who were the winners of the 1979 National League Most Valuable Player? And the All Star Game MVP. That was the game that was in Seattle, wasn't it? 1979. Lifted the left field to the gap. It goes. Ball won't get there. Andy LaRoche racing out front is lost. Stephen Drew, the relay to the plate, and in time. So, shutout broken up. Andy LaRoche, 37 RBIs this year. He had struck out back in the second inning. So the walk comes back to bite the teeth. Well, we talk about it all the time. Especially two out walks. You're asking for trouble. He worked his way through the first two hitters issued a base on balls and it comes back to bite. 1979. 
That game was in Seattle in 79. The All-Star game, obviously. Well, why don't you do what you usually do and get on your computer and find out? Let me tell you why, Big Talker. Let me hear it, pal. I was at that game. Really? Oh, you betcha. Nine years old in attendance at that game. Really? Mm -hmm. The 0 1. I know that on occasion you like to text in some guesses to Mark Grace when he is sitting here. Or so he tells us anyway. He what? might be watching out on his laptop. I know he never misses a game when he's traveling. Where is he, by the way? He is in Detroit. So let's see. Detroit. Hold on. Wait a minute. Is he coming? Wait a minute. I don't know if it's him. Hold on. Ha! Ah, Mr. Grace. All I have to do is call out for him, stir it up a little bit. Well, folks, I just received a text from our old buddy Mark Grace. And his guess is Mark Grace. Unbelievable. The vanity that you guys have. Well, he's old enough. He certainly he was a he was a star player in 1979. So you always guess you and he always guesses him. Or are we to believe that you always guess you? Well, we're going to have to clarify. OK. Because my friend, he doles it out oh. big time. Vasquez line drive center field. Out front now is LaRoche. Young throw way off the mark. And moving up there. Getting an extra base is Vasquez. A nice piece of hitting. Back through the middle with two outs and a runner in scoring position. And good base running. You know, you, you teach young players to run the bases and be aggressive. As soon as that ball gets above head level for the infielder, especially with two outs, and especially if there's a potential play at the plate, have that batter runner get to second base and create that scoring opportunity again. Now he's talking about you getting to eat. Well, my good friends at the ABC restaurant heard me not being fed, and I appreciate it. It's uh, oh, it's National Hot Dog exactly. Month, folks. Wait, are these yours? This is all mine. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. this is all mine. I already had seconds. Yeah, you already did. So, uh, got the Arizona dog as well. Got the minis up there at the ABC Club. National Hot Dog Month. Now it's time for me. Sorry. Get it in you. Out of way. That one is fouled off. Chase Field sells nearly a half a million hot dogs a year. The Arizona dog, of course. Each time a D-backs player hits a home run, all fans sitting in the row of the person who catches the homer receives a coupon for a free dog. They have to catch it. Well, just get it, I would imagine. Well, if they do catch it, we'll they get also a get a contract. Speaking of homers, deep right field. Foul ball. That is the pitcher, Zach Duke. Caught it in the air. He brought, he brought his, his glove. glove. Yep, there's a contract. Let's Give see. Give that man a contract. Oh, yeah. And he stole it from somebody oh, else, absolutely. too. Oh, absolutely. See, folks, right there, there's the advantage of bringing your glove to the ballpark. He reached right over that guy and snatched it from him. Yo, Can't do yo. that with the bare hand. Broke his bat. Long run, Chris Young. Makes the play for the out. So on hot dog month, enjoy yourself a dog. Come on out to the ball yard. And if you're, you know, bringing your glove, making the play, we're signing you up. We'll see him in a minute. That away, lefty.
I think that's her right there. Five hundred ten thousand dollars. Christy Hill. Very good stuff there. Together. We have all kinds of things going on in the stands tonight. Bouncing ball. It's a foul ball. We have someone a chance to win a half a million dollars. I, I'm saying that's clearly them. I mean, they're beside themselves nervous. And maybe sending up some prayers up above. She's telling Gerardo where to hit it. And he grounds it to short, so Para is erased. All right, let's answer our Aflac trivia question, Dave Parker. Aflac! Talking about the 1979 All Star answer, game. And the answer is Mark Grace. That's what he said. No? Aflac! I remember Dave throwing out Brian Downing. And the All-Star game, and then the co-MVPs. You can see Willie Stargell and Keith Hernandez. Cobra, which is away. One and zero. The count. Talk about having your reputation precede you. Nobody ran on him. Oh, nobody. At nine years old, I remember seeing in person why. An all-star game in Seattle. Boy, I miss that kingdom. That was a beautiful ballpark. The 2-0. Live ball. He hit it out towards the side. He left field. The ballpark holds it. Boy, that might have been a nervous moment. Brandon Moss hauls it in. He took a ride out there. Got it off the end a little bit. It was good towards. What's the reaction? Could it be? Could it be? Come over here. Nest. All right. We have one more shot out. Jack can do it. He hit that ball last night. Hey, Matt Williams, a half a million dollars, five hundred ten grand. That's a boatload. Breaking ball and the count one and one. Bouncing ball. Here's to the bag. A one, two, three inning for Duke. It was fun playing. You guys gave it a great try. The folks at Gila River Casino say hit it and win. I came and visited my home, and it was an honor to, ha to have an evaluation and uh, an analysis of how things were going. 
And for me, I have to be honest with you, is that one is fouled off. I sit here all night and get in trouble for going on the computer and cheating and trivia questions and researching and such. With my computer, I was stunned with how much I was able to learn about how I use energy. Absolutely. If you go to APS.com, as you did, you'll find out a whole lot about what your house is using, what's making it efficient or inefficient, as the case may be, how inefficient is your duct work, as you found out when yes, you looked at some of the stuff. I did. 30-year-old uh, homes like yours, that's going to tend to happen. A big part's just being on the right rate as well, which you also learned. You talked about, I, I saw the broadcast last night, talking about treating the ducts. You know, we, we think of this environment and you have your AC, your HVAC system, and it just works. But there's ways that you can be effective in cutting down your energy use simply by treating your duct work. Absolutely, and it's a very inexpensive way to do it because we'll also give you a rebate on that. Cut the cost of doing it about in half, and you'll save probably $200 a year just on more efficient cooling. It's, it's important in this environment. It is important in this environment. Uh, that gets some CFL bulbs that use a lot less energy, generate no heat whatsoever, last for five to seven years. Uh, great way to you know, light your house. Get a high efficiency air conditioner, which will make you a lot cooler for less money. There's a lot of things out there you can do that aren't very hard to save some money. And the one thing we learned, we'll show you our tip, by the way, our APS energy tip. And as we mentioned, visit APS.com. Turn off ceiling fans when you leave the room. You know, the one thing we always talk about, and I'm sure it's it's a big mantra with your group, is the fact that, you know, not only are you helping yourself and saving a few bucks, but it's kind of a win-win. It's a big picture thing for the environment, for the economy, and all that we're talking about these days. Absolutely. I mean, there's no reason for any of us to waste any energy. We can all use it more efficiently. We are also in the market of getting renewable energy, wind, solar, biomass, geothermal. We're using all of that to help clean up the environment. Oh, and Young didn't find that ball for the longest time. Isn't that interesting? He hit that ball, was standing at home plate, and Matty, Mr. Robinson, we're going to hop in here real quick for a minute. He wasn't hot-dogging at all. No, he just didn't know where <laughs> it was. Watch this. Watch him. He takes a swing. He has no idea where it is. He assumes that it's going in the stands somewhere, and whoops. I guess I better get out of the box and get to first base before they throw me out from left field. <laughs> that would not be good. That would not be good at all. So explain to us, that, us laymans, that, that don't know about green energy. Okay. Uh, we look at this ballpark and what it takes to run this place, what it takes to simply turn those lights on. You guys are, during this homestand, are using renewable energy or alternative energy to power this whole homestand. Explain to us that don't know what that really means. Basically what we've done is we've gone out working with the Diamondbacks and purchased enough renewable energy to run all the facilities here through the entire homestand. We bought wind power, there's solar. Uh, as, we, as I said before, if you look at it, we burn a lot of normal fossil fuels, okay, which do cause some impact on the environment. Renewable energy, which is becoming much more available, costs a little bit more now, but the prices are coming down. We have a huge solar program, two new big solar plants down in the Gila Bend area, a couple of wind, uh, large wind plants in New Mexico, uh, some geothermal, which is oh, just blue. Oh, oh, oh. game in the major leagues and this one Matty comes with a runner on base he hadn't hit many of those got it last night he hadn't he hadn't got a hit with a runner on base until last night and tonight he follows with a two run homer he's got great power not a bad pitch kind of down and away and he was able to get the head of the bat out there and use that power as we talk about power to drive it on out of here I would have rather not seen that power used yeah, so the great story continues. You get a young man like this, you keep waiting for it to go away. It's not going away. No. You wonder where where has he been? With what he's shown so far, he should have been in the big leagues a long time ago. Big shift to pull for Domit on Robinson with APS. The president of APS joins us up here in the broadcast booth as Domit serves that one into right field. Solar energy. I know you were talking about the, the large solar plants that you have as we'll have time to have this discussion right now. How much do you like to, can you, do you work with your customers if they opt to 
install solar panels on the roofs of their home. We work totally with them. We have a rebate program that will give them a rebate that they can add to the uh, tax credit that they okay. get for putting it in that will bring the price of putting uh, solar down 50 to 80 percent depending on what type of solar because we have both solar photovoltaic that provides power but there's also solar hot water heaters that'll you know heat the water of your house using the power of the sun so there you go maddie government benefits tax benefits as well well it's great you know the, 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 our world is moving toward that as you say there's only so many fossil fuels that we have in our on our planet correct and we have to take the steps necessary to look at alternative energy and APS is doing it. It is, and in Arizona we have a lot of sun, and that's where we're primarily focused was with the solar. Yeah, one of your biggest real-life endorsers of that, Ralph Kelso, one of our fine camera operators here, he, uh, he's he been all in and had everything done and has seen the benefits. He's receiving credits in his bill already. Means, Maddie, that means no money due. How about that? That's a nice deal, huh? At the end of each month, no money due. I like that deal. So one and one the count. Also saw on the broadcast last night Duran saying that you know he he has a certain plan for his power, uh, and the lady that he was talking to last night said you know what I might want to take a look at that again because there's other advantages depending on the plan that you choose. Absolutely, we have uh, various rate plans for our customers depending on when you're going to use power, how much power you use, uh, if you're willing to make some changes in how you use it, you can save a whole lot of money. We have different uh, on and off peak periods, uh, and in Darren's case, he can definitely make a difference by making a switch. Oh, I've made it. Done. I've made it. Going out and buy a new suit now. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about I was I was really? spending a little extra. So I invited him over, Manny. Two and one the count. And it was painless. It was painless. It was, uh, I used to call them the, you know, the, the squiggly, squirrely light bulbs. The CFL bulbs. And then I learned that's what they're called. Well, now you know. See, it's all about being educated, right? And I wasn't. Although my home, you know, passed okay with 2-1. Change up and it dives low. Let's take a peek up top to our APS rooftop solar camp. And as I always say each night, reminding you that if you're able... And it sounds like you can have a lot of help from APS install solar panels on the roof of your home. And you will reap benefits as will our environment. Don Robinson, the president of APS, joining us up here in the broadcast booth. Runner goes, swings over the top of the slide, and throw down. Not in time. It's a stolen base. For Ryan Domit. Big fella. That's one of those things. Three one three two. They're probably going most of the time. He picked the right pitch, not because he was trying to steal that base necessarily, but it was a breaking ball that took a little longer to get to home plate. He got a good jump and was able to get in there. Talked about it early. Having a young club with confidence. Coming into this series, they'd taken two straight series, winning two out of three, had knocked some pretty good pitchers out of games previously they got a little confidence rolling fouled that one off at home plate three and two the count the other thing we leave a lot of folks do in the summer Don and, and when you leave your home you know the one thing you don't remind yourself obviously you know certain things like maybe your refrigerator if you have food in there but a lot of folks escape for a weekend or for a week. I travel all summer long. There's a lot of things I can actually unplug, correct? Absolutely. Uh, if you unplug them, a lot of things use power and energy, even you, though you don't think they are. People leave chargers plugged in for your phones, for your Blackberries, etc. Mark Reynolds from his knees. Jan Tracy can't hold on. End of third with a slide is Ryan Dober. Reynolds made a fine play. Yeah, Chase, he couldn't dig it out. Now, you've been on both ends of this, Matt Williams. You've been on that third base side where once you release it, you hope that someone's there on the other side. Oh, we got a pitching change. We're going to step aside. This will give us a chance to thank you for educating us. Thank you for educating me coming into our home. My pleasure. We We're really do, do appreciate it. it. Don Robinson, the president of APS. Mm -hmm. We're going to step aside with a pitching change. Just visit APS.com.
Next organization star, Chaz Roberts, cool play of the game, catching the long foul ball from Zach Duke. And, and Jonas, we'd like to present you with a contract as, as we get your thoughts on what you were thinking as the ball was headed your way. Well, thank you. I saw the, uh, the flight, and I was like, well, that's coming our way. And I uh, stuck my glove out and uh, had a good read on it and caught the ball and was happy that I did You kind of had a premonition that you were going to catch a, a ball when you came to the ballpark. Yeah, actually, I did. I uh, come to the ballpark a lot uh, all over the country, catch foul balls. And actually, I told uh, Ryan here, my friend, that I was going to catch one today. Really? And he could tell you more about that. How many foul balls have you caught? I've caught six in one season, minor league, major league. Caught one in Yankee Stadium, and this really? is my second one in, uh, in a big league park. Well, Ryan was telling us all about that. They're doing some church mission work out here, and he had a, a premonition from above that uh, he might catch another foul ball. That makes six, guys. What a story. Get yourself a contract there and four free tickets to the game. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Guys, back to the booth. Great stuff. We're looking around for more plays, Big Mac. We may be sending you up to the upper deck in left field now. Sandlot. Esmerling Vasquez takes over. We're wearing him out in the right field. Here comes Justin Upton. Got the plan on a hop. Base hit. Brandon Moss with an RBI. And the Pirates whacking the ball around the park. They now lead it 5 2. As we had a conversation with our great friends and partners with APS, didn't want to let it get too far. It all disappeared quickly for you, Smero Petit. Yeah, the ball started getting up in the strike zone, falling behind hitters. And we talked about it. Young club. Good offense is contagious. And they, you know, they came in playing really well. Oh, and one the count. Esmerling Vasquez. Well, you talk about the bullpen for the Diamondbacks in their last five games. They've had to work 17 and two thirds innings. ERA of 2.04. That one kicks away. Montero can't hold on to it, and runners move up. Yeah, 2.04 ERA out of the bullpen will that'll win you games. You know, a five to two game is manageable. They got to keep this runner at third from scoring in this inning. He's got strikeout stuff. He's got to use it. And J. Hinch was talking the other day about figuring out Esmerling Vasquez's place. I mean, you talk about this young man, and he has rolled in his last 15 games. ERA 2.7. Four innings was 250 against him during that time. Much better. Outside, but the the thing for AJ and the decision making process is all right, how much do I raise his leverage? I mean, he's doing a lot of this work in games where, you know, starter maybe gets knocked out early, team is behind. All of a sudden, you start doing good work, doing good work. You've managed. Yeah. You get to that point where I might have to raise his leverage. Well, this is, though the team's down by three, as you said, very important time here to shut it down. Well, you have, you know, you look at Esmerling Vasquez. I was a manager. I managed him. He was a starter for me in double A ball. So you look at his ability as a pitcher, he can go either way. He's done a great job out of the bullpen, but he can also start. He's accustomed to doing that. So you look at him the rest of this year, beyond, mm. there's spots that you can put him where he'll be effective. Struggling, though, I think AJ's concerned if he does put him in higher leverage situations, trying to do too much, and we see it here. Don't forget, follow the D-backs on your iPhone and iPod Touch with MLB.com at Bat 2009 featuring play-by-play -play and video highlights from Fox Sports Arizona and live audio broadcast from KTAR Radio. Visit D-backs.com on your iPhone or iPod Touch to purchase. Now, here you go. This could be the ball game. Vasquez takes low. 1-0 the count. Oh, yeah. You get into an inning like this, you don't want it to get too big because it just makes the hill longer and steeper trying to climb back. We saw it last night. They climbed back. Change up there is a good pitch. I give credit to Montero for that one. Obviously, the pitcher had to execute it, but sure. he just wasn't liking his feel for the fastball. Well, he's all over the place with his fastball. It generally, 
the fastball is the pitch that the pitcher can spot most effectively. Sometimes it just goes away and you got to go to a, a secondary pitch to get a strike. Fastball fly ball center field. Bar. Score on a sack fly. Ramon Vasquez, his 12th RBI of the year, and it's now six to two. We talked to AJ Hinch about the amount of innings that the that the bullpen has thrown as of late, the availability of his bullpen tonight. He doesn't have a concern about health or. Any of his guys being tired, so now at this point he's looking at matchups to try to manage the rest of this game and and keep the score for the other team where it is and try to claw their way back. Pitcher Zach Duke, who handles the bat just fine, thank you very much. And that one is in one and zero. The count. Mark McClune, Matt Williams, Darren Sutton, and you. And trust that you have had a good week. And you have now made it to the finish line. Hope you have a great weekend. It's been a hot one this week, huh? Yes, it has been. One and one the count to do. Now these last couple of innings, the Pirates have exploded. Ball game that had the Diamondbacks leading two to nothing has a very different look to it. Not going to be easy off the play for Reynolds. Keeps those feet moving. Four runs in the fifth inning. Time to go to work. Really time to go to work. That call at first base. You try to you try to hear the sound, hear the sound, and you watch the bag because okay. the, the and then you see you see uh, the first baseman's foot, you see the hitter, the batter runner's foot, and uh, and you you try to also pick up the first baseman catching the ball. Um, if you take your time and you're still, it's like taking a picture. Um, if you want to take a good picture. Of, of, of a group, you don't go 10 feet from the group, you won't get everybody in the frame. Gotcha. If you back up, take your time, if you're the right distance, and take your time, you're going to take a good picture, and if you have a good picture, you're going to have a better opportunity to get the Boy, is that great stuff, isn't it, Matt? Incredible. All in a fraction of a second. Right. So, in that particular play, he's got to determine. We, we, we hear 
the crew chiefs say, you listen for the sound, sound of the ball going in the glove. You watch the feet, so you have the, f the first baseman's feet or the pitcher's feet and the batter runner's feet. So he heard the ball hit the glove before the runner got to the base, but then he had to make the determination of whether Yusmero touched the base or not, all in about a fifth of a second to make that call. Think their job's easy? No. And you nailed it as we talked with each and every one of them yesterday in preparation for tomorrow night. The one thing we learned is they want you to think their job's easy. They don't want to be a part of anything. No. They just want to officiate. If they go unnoticed, it's a great game. I can't tell you how happy I am, you know, to be a part of this this weekend because it's going to be so much fun, well, such a different perspective. I would agree with you. I would agree with you. We are fortunate. Major League Baseball, the legwork that's been done. Jason Lewis, our producer, Mitch Rigg is our director. And these guys, you know, they got an hour and a half to get ready to go to work tomorrow. These guys in the dugout, they take four and a half, five hours to get ready, which is fine. They gave us one half hour of their hour and a half. Well, can you imagine being these guys? They show up to the ballpark every day and somebody's going to yell at them. Yep. Somebody. It's a given. That is a way. 1 0 the count. Somebody's going to think they're wrong. Usually it's one of the managers. He's certainly going to get uh, yelled at by a fan. Nice shot, base hit. Andy LaRoche laid it out. And for Ryan Roberts, a two for three night. Taking a look at velocity, who's using it, how they're using it. Our quest high speed internet, high speed pitch. Zach Duke getting to 91 miles an hour. His average fastball, 89 on the season. You Sparrow Petit out of the ball game, getting to 90. He averages 87. Well, it's all relative, isn't it? It certainly is. 87, 97. Every one of these guys can hit a fastball. It's how effective your secondary pitches are. We need this young man to hit a fastball here. Hit in the gap somewhere. He can sail over the wall. That's just fine by me. Get this club back in the ball game. He's grounded out twice. It's lefties at a 373 clip coming in. 2 0 the count. Well, he's got himself in that fastball count. So the key is just enough to nose that he's got the ability to hit the ball at the ballpark and give his team two runs. But he's got to stay within himself. He's been showing us as of late coming out of this little mini slump that short swing. And that's all he needs to do at this point is put that short swing on it and everything else to take care of itself. Hitters count. This is where a crafty veteran tries to take advantage. Justin, as you said, that short swing goes the other way. Roberts not even blinking an eye. Into third he goes. It goes off the mark. Up the up He's in a run now. And he's out. Tough way to end the inning.
He hesitated. He hesitated in his decision to go to second base. There were really two mistakes in this play. One is Justin. He hesitated. He hesitated and then decided to go. But there's two outs in the inning, so you you have to. If you're Ryan Roberts, you have to force their hand right there and make them make another play, make them throw the ball to the plate. You assume that the that Justin, the batter runner, is going to be tagged out anyway, so you have to try to force their hand. Hopefully, in that situation, they throw the ball away, they bobble it, you're able to score the run. That makes all the sense in the world, Matt. I mean. Well, you know, it, of course it does. Hindsight is. Uh, you, the further you get away from the field, the easier it is. I've, I've been in that situation. It's not. It's not easy. You're trying to be aggressive. Just pointing out, you know, the options there. If if there is two outs and you got a guy hung up, be aggressive and make them make another throw. You never know what can happen. The 2 1. To the right side, it's hugging the line. If it's fair, it's trouble. It's a foul ball. Foul ball racing out there, says James Hoy. Who, by the way, was studying to be a broadcaster at UConn. Really? Yep. See, that's the kind of insight that only we can get. You and I, that is. Didn't really think about umpiring until he started helping out doing. Games, amateur games. Oh, this is pretty fun. No, I really think I like it. I'm pretty good at it. He's a ball player. He studied communications. I'll tell you this, by the way. We have Todd Titchener at third and James Hoy at first. That one swung right over the top of it. And that is strike three. Let's take a ride out to our power sports pool cam. Is that where Ryan Roberts hit that home run? That's exactly where he did. Pretty good view from out there. Checking out the ball game. Hello? the play for the out. Don't forget, be sure to get tickets to tomorrow's Pirates and D-backs game at Chase Field. First 25,000 fans to the game receive a D-backs visor. You get tickets today by calling 602-514-8400 or visit online at dbacks.com. And if for some reason you just can't make it to the ballpark, make sure you check out the telecast because you're going to get an inside view of the other side of the game from the umpire's perspective. And, you know, for me and, and Darren, it's probably going to be pretty special. I need to, by the way, correct myself. It's home plate umpire Jim Reynolds that was at UConn studying communications. And so Jim Reynolds along the way is that one. There goes Jones again. Deep left field racing. That maybe, just maybe, to swing some momentum into the bat rack of the Diamondbacks.
5G network, AT&T, your world delivered. Great job in the tape room as usual. Matt, Derek, and Ernie back there. So all the work is done. A little film effect there. And Matt Weber building that one. Felt like I was watching old pictures, old movies. Hmm. Good look there. Nice job. All right, Matty, time to get it going. Well, it starts with the base runner. Got to have somebody on the base if you want to score runs. Good guy to do it right here. Mark Reynolds has been patient at the plate. There's your base runner. So we'll take a page from Gracie's book. Remember many a time in the dugout, somebody would lead off the inning with a double. You'd hear Gracie's voice from the dugout telling the hitter trade places with it. It's time to trade places. Follow a double with a double. Mix in a couple singles in there. You're back in this game. That, by the way, is an eight game hitting streak, a career high for Mark Reynolds. Here's Miguel Montero. Single, popped out to second base. Wrecking ball is away. So as hot as Miguel is, that's how hot the Cardinals hope that Matt Holliday will be, the newest member of the Cardinals, four for five tonight. As St. Louis blasted Philadelphia eight to one. Well, there you go. When I heard about the trade today, I thought to myself, "Hmm, is that really what they need? They need another big bat in their lineup. They're already right-handed heavy in their lineup. Would it be a wise decision, maybe, to go out and try to get a starting pitcher?" But but evidently they know what they're talking about because they've blasted the red hot Phillies tonight. Also in that game, by the way, two hits, two runs scored. Julio Lugo. Hmm. Interesting. The one-one. Hot shot, base hit, right center field. Here comes Mark Reynolds to score easily, and here come the Diamondbacks. Unbelievable, Miguel Montero. Goodness gracious. Are you kidding me? Two more hits tonight. Well, it says something, doesn't it? Can you imagine being Miguel and not getting a whole lot of chance to play? And when you do get that chance, you have to produce. Maybe if you do produce, you're going to get a chance the next day. He looks just so much more relaxed mm -hmm. knowing that he's going to get a, a consistent number of at bats and being there as as long as he can be in there. He'll get his occasional days off. All right, to right field. The play is made. Hold that thought, Matt Williams. We're going to take a peek at our out of town scoreboard brought to you by FreeCreditReport.com. Get your score. Visit FreeCreditReport.com. We told you. About the game at the bottom, the Cardinals, the Cubs, and the Reds. That's a fun. Oh, Ramos Ramirez, certainly one of my favorite players. Four for five with a home run and two doubles. And Roy Halladay. Look at this. Unbelievable. Holiday traded. Holiday not yet. Will be. I think so. Do you? I'm telling you, if you need a starting pitcher, can you can you possibly pass it up? Mm-hmm. There's no way I couldn't. It'll cost you. Cost you. I don't know. Maybe. Brett Gamble, Matt Gamble, now Cedis Escobar, and Manny Parra. Just let's say. Okay. I've got him ticketed to Milwaukee. Okay. Well, if you're the Brew Crew and you want to make the playoffs and get to the World Series, you got to go get. It. That's exactly right. It's like that. You know, you look at. We talked to AJ about uh, the status of the bullpen. Well, it doesn't matter. We play for today. We play for this year. Granted, you have to look to the future if you're the general manager and what what you can do in years coming up. But my word, if you've got a chance, you got to try to take advantage of it. Brett Wallace, by the way, a fine hitter. Homer Sun Devil, All-American. 
I mean, well, Connor Jackson worked out with him this winter. He said as pretty of a swing as I've ever seen. Yeah. So the A's didn't do too bad either on the other side. No, if you're it's gonna, a good deal. No, I mean, the, yeah, the other side of that coin, if you're the team that needs him, you go get him. The other team wants to make sure that they stockpile. The way it's done. Is it important enough to go get that one big guy for that particular year? Maybe, maybe one on the back end of it, and give up some of the farm. Bouncing ball pitch in and he caught it. Race is right through there. Miguel Montero is erased. So Carlton is on. Montero, by the way, 11 of his last 25 games have been multi-hit games. Nearly half of his games is getting two or more hits. That's since Chris Snyder went on the DL the 21st day of June. Well, it's just comfort level, timing, rhythm. And you've seen from Miguel, granted, his hitting's been fantastic, but his throwing's gotten better. You know, his leadership capabilities have come forward a little more. It all, you know, it all helps. It, it all was part of the confidence you get as, as a player being caught offensively, but that rhythm and timing is very important. You were around him a lot in spring training. Tell me about his leadership capabilities. He's a pretty vocal guy when he's confident. He's a vocal guy. He's a vocal guy regardless. But, you know, it's one thing to talk. It's another thing to do it. You, know, you speak of Mark Reynolds and what he said in Colorado mm -hmm. and the fact that he's got to back it up now. Well, he's done that. And ultimately, your best leaders are the guys that, you know, dive over the fence and, and hit their head on the concrete in an effort to catch the ball. Doesn't have to say anything. And lead by example. 0 oh, and 1 to count. Right back out there. He's gone to the same spot twice. That is right on the corner, not just off the edge. A tough pitch to handle. And that's a pitcher's pitch. A little crossfire. He's stepping right at Chad and firing across to the outside corner. It's tough to judge whether that's a strike or not. One and two, the count to Chad Tracy. Six runs, ten hits, and no errors hold the visiting Pittsburgh Pirates. They have stranded six. Three runs, nine hits, and no errors for the Diamondbacks. They've stranded four. Pittsburgh coming off back-to-back -back series wins and pretty respectable ones. Beating up Milwaukee two of three and San Francisco two of three. In on the hands, away, 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 and then he went in. Touching calls everybody off. And puts it away. They get a run back. Trying to come back in.
again. And our family from New Mexico with a fine play. See the only difference between those two? Your home crowd catches you. That's Your a great crowd point. Doesn't. No. And doing a fine job. Well, it seems like just yesterday he got here from Double A Mobile, Alabama. Arrived on the scene. Started hitting an awful lot then. We've seen the ups and downs throughout. I think the fun part is Leo Rosales goes to work about guys like Mark and Chris and Justin, Miguel as well. As much as they go through what they're going through this year, those four or five guys played the National League Championship Series two years ago. Yeah. And they're also experiencing rock bottom this year on occasion. It happens, doesn't it? It's up to them, I guess, to continue to take those experiences and get better each time. You have to learn from both sides. Sure. It's never as easy as it seems when you're going well, and it's never as hard as it seems when you're not. So to find that balance somewhere in the middle is what it's all about. Everybody talk, talks about even keel. Got to keep an even keel. Well, it's easier said than done. The key is to just grind. That's all you can do. Take every at bat seriously, take every play seriously, and every game seriously, and go try to win as many as you can. Some years it's going to happen like it happened in 2007. Some years are going to be like this one's been thus far. Stephen Drew is well a part of that team, a key part of that team. But the other part of it that's fun just for fans, if I may let the fan in me come out. It's to see a guy like Mark Reynolds and to know that we've kind of been a part of all of it. You know, we've yeah. seen it all. And when you see those moments of maturation, I'm sure people following you in San Francisco saw the same things. Whether it's leadership, ability, it's kind of fun as a fan. Sure. Sure it is. And it's kind of fun as a player to, to know that your, your fans are behind you. Regardless. And I think these these younger players on this club are gaining that fan interest. They feel for Mark when he's not doing well. They appreciate the fact that you know if you really look at Mark Reynolds this year, on average, he's gonna give you a 30 and 100. Mm -hmm. But really look at his year. If he continues on the pace that he's on, 30, 30, 100, and 100. <laughs> A pretty special year. You know what made me think of all this, folks, is there's another out. And I mentioned the store only because they're our partner. And I promise this is where I was. But I went this morning, got up pretty early, as we all know to do in the summertime. You do your errands early. I walked through about 7 this morning, a Fry's grocery store. And they're hanging in the section of extra stuff, maybe greeting cards and different things. It was a Mark Reynolds jersey that they were selling. Kind of the, the jersey you can buy and bring home. Uh, I've been shopping in this store for a couple of years. A couple of years back, I don't think I'd have seen a Mark Reynolds jersey hanging. Yeah, congratulations, kid. You've arrived. At a grocery store. Hey, the team shop is awesome. That's where you want to go. But to see it right there, you know, with some T-shirts and Diamondbacks cups that they have in their section. It was spun around. So the people would notice whose name was on the back. Sure. Now he plays about the name on the front. That's right. You must. If your team believes that the name on the front is more important than the name on the back, you will win. One and two, the count. How about that inning for Leo Rosales? Setting him up and knocking him down.
there too. Josh Burns, we're talking trade, rotation, the goals for 2010, and even the minor league prospects. So uh, make sure you text to 36929. And a reminder tomorrow on Quest D-backs Live, D-backs President Derek Hall. So great stuff. And guys, you get a chance to interact as well. So hopefully you've got some questions for Josh as well. We'll see you right after the game on Quest D-backs Live. We do have a few. And we are looking forward to looking back on the ball game. But trade talk, the number one talk. We'll let, uh, let Brad and the fans ask that question. Andy and I have, uh, have a few questions. Yeah, interesting times right now. Lots of possibilities. Speaking of interesting times, we here in the booth in the Diamondbacks organization would like to congratulate the Scottsdale Pirates. The Cal Ripken 12 and under 50 to 70 league on their state tournament title. They're, they're, they're coached by a couple of really good ex players. Ex pirate first baseman Kevin Young is the manager. And pitching coach is our own Valley resident Terry Bross. So they're going to head on over to Bakersfield and see what they can do over there. That's awesome. Congratulations. Strike out of Romero. How about that? There they are, the champs, huh? Oh, it's what it's all about, right? You so bet. everybody out here that's playing on this field right now started. That to them is just as important as the world championship is to the Diamondbacks. It's all relative. <laughs> that's great. Nice going, guys. Oh, and one to Cal. Now those pirates I pull for. Pulling hard for him. Good luck. Stephen Drew doubled, lined to short. And he grounded out to second base. What do you think it is? Do you think it's coincidence or do you think it's a change in the batting order for Stephen? I mean, you know, you look at it and you say, okay, well, he's been due for a hot streak for a while now. Had an injury. You've got to get that timing back. But his swing just looks really, really short right now. Yeah, maybe that's a, in part, as you would say. He could like two. Unbelievable. Again, up against the wall. Steven was thrown out trying to stretch a double into a triple back in the third inning with his club down three. He throws out an anchor. He gets a little bit of both. I think he was due for a hot streak, but maybe he shortened up because he was at the top of the order a little bit. I don't know. You know, it, it, we're all human and we're all subject to mindset, I would imagine. You liken it to, uh, you know, look at Justin Upton in April trying to do a little bit too much. Swing gets big. He, he, he misses the pitch that he's supposed to hit potentially and gets behind in the count and maybe has to hit a pitcher's pitch to try to get a base hit. I don't know. As Russell comes out to make a move, I will tell you, Matt Williams, 114 games as a leadoff hitter, hitting 288 with an OPS of 822. No other spot in the order really steps up like that. Maybe a couple of times down at the bottom. Sixth, seventh, eighth. And then 114 games as a leadoff hitter. He has been very, very good. Chavez coming on from the bullpen.
chance to LaRoche early in the game. That's why they do all the cutoff and relay drills in spring training right there, pal. Brought to you by our good friends with Mercedes-Benz E-Class. So now the call of the bullpen for the right-hander a moment ago, Matt. No, there's two right-handers warming. Which which one do you want? Well, who do you want, says Hanrahan. Chavez says, you know what, I'll go in the game. I'm ready. You want the big one with the short hair or the no, no, smaller no. one with the long hair? No, I don't I don't want you. Johnny Russell says, I don't care. Somebody. I want the other right-hander. The wrong one came in. Chavez came in and then went back. And traded spots. His hand hand goes to work. I, I was liking the confidence of Chavez. He threw that He's last ready. toss, spun around, and in he charged. Whoop. Time. Rewind. Go ahead and go back to the bullpen, put your jacket on. Joel Hanrahan, who's bucking for a promotion, fires it in there. One and one the count. Four straight scoreless appearances. You saw that high earn run average of late. It's been better. He's picked up in that deal, along with Lasting's Millage, that sent Niger Morgan and Sean Burnett to Washington. Was in June, end of June. The 2 1. Didn't hear about that deal, did they? I did. I knew about it. I know you knew. And folks at home, I was sharing that with. I oh, think oh, a couple of them oh. kind of slid right by. Oh, I apologize. I had forgotten about it. Did Gracie knew about it? That's what made me think about it. Oh. 3 and 1 to count. On the outside, three and two, the count. Hard to argue with that stuff. Ninety-three over the outside corner. Yeah, uh, ninety-three. Good stuff. Three and one. Not so good stuff. That's been the story. And yeah, his stuff's fantastic when he gets ahead. Finds himself behind probably too much. Earlier in the ball game, a thing of beauty for Robert. Stay inside the baseball and elevate it a little bit. That's great. The three two. But he's going to win. Yeah. Just flipping it out there. Brian Roberts has put together some good ABs tonight. A single to left. Driven a couple of balls the opposite way towards the pool. One went over, one didn't quite make it. That's just staying on the baseball right there. He's always swung hard. You saw him all spring long. He uses a big bat for his body size. But if you're going to do it like that, you're just fine. Sure. He's going to get a large opportunity, isn't he, Ryan Roberts? You would think. You know, if you look at it from a team perspective, they pretty much know what Augie can do. He's proven that. The wild card is Ryan. You just don't know. I mean, yeah, granted, has he played well? Sure. But how can he do it on an everyday basis is the key. Can't hit it much higher than that, unfortunately, right into that club of Brandon Moss. That bat, unable to do what he wanted it to do. Took a little beat there.
Baseball brought to you by Bluebell Ice Cream, who reminds you that July is National Ice Cream Month. If you're nuts about nuts, try Bluebell's new nutty chocolate ice cream and buy Southwest Airlines. They're ready when you are. Go to Southwest.com, grab your bag. It's on. Oh, it's on, all right. Stay tuned for the comeback, says loyal Diamondbacks fan Mike Haggerty. Always has the creative signs. And uh, you hope that the comeback doesn't have to be any greater than where we look right now. Six to three is the score. I will say this coming out of the bullpen, Leo Rosales did a great job mowing him down out of the gates. And the bullpen's been really good. You know, it's a long season. Sometimes it takes a little while to find your groove, you know, as a unit. Whether it's offensively, whether it's the starting pitchers, the bullpen, maybe defensively. Bouncing ball, that's a foul ball. Ramon Vasquez. Same two teams tomorrow night. We'll have it for you. Go behind the scenes with this umpiring crew of Reynolds, Hoy, Welke, and Tishner. Let me tell you something, folks. Not everybody can get this done. A lot of work. A lot of phone calls. A lot of permission. You bet. Asked for to get that done. I'll bring you something special. You played your whole career standing by one. We always talk about catchers. They're a little bit. In proximity, they're a little bit closer to the umpire. And you had one bend in your ear on occasion. The 0 1. Are you a guy that would occasionally chat him up, say hello? Or did you? Oh, yeah, pretty always. focused player. So. No, always, you always, always say hello. There, I had, I had one incident where I was completely out of line. Had a problem with an umpire in Chicago one day. That uh, made a call that I didn't agree with to end the game in a, in a crucial situation. And the next day, I, you know, again, a day game in Chicago, I steamed about it all night and decided, you know, playing third base, the guy from home plate moves to third base oh the next boy. day. So I decided that I was going to have him hear it from me and give him an ear, earful for nine innings. So I talked as much as I wanted to talk. He just completely ignored me. Made me even more mad. Wow. He wouldn't say a word. Just ignored me. Gracie heard me. Gracie laughed at me from the dugout. From the dugout. Cubs dugout. He thought it was funny. I was steamed. Man. You were fired up like that man. He got fired up as well. He's fired up every day. The one two fouls that one back. Not a word back, huh? Not a single word. About that patience. I yeah. He could have easily just said, "Hey, I've had enough. Beat go, it. go take a shower." But it was almost punishment for me. He loved it. I would have answered. He, he loved every moment of it. Not give me the satisfaction of kicking me out of the game and making me feel good about it. One and two the count. Six to three the score. Looking for a ground ball. And he takes low. Change up there. Two and two. That's his his best pitch. In the following day when he was a second base umpire, of course you're gonna look at each other, right? So the following day he was standing out at second base when we took the field. After the top of the first inning, he just gave me the this little wry smile, as if to say, "That's what you deserve." And it was all over after that. All right, he allowed you to have your say. Mm -hmm. While still, I was just talking to myself, though. <laughs> <laughs> two and two, the count. Eleven hits for the Pirates, ten for the Diamondbacks. Neither team's committed an error. Mm. 
Change up misses. Three and two the count. Well, you're in slam reach. And slam reach with six outs to go. And two of your hottest hitters leading off the next inning. You've got to try to get out of this one with a zero. Popped up. Ryan Roberts going back. It's a base hit. Numbers are on first and third for the Pittsburgh Pirates. So now Homer Diamond back. Jeff Salazar. Right up until the end of June. And checking for Joel Hamrahan, number 18. Jeff Triple Salazar. Indianapolis as Chip Hale sets the defense. I'll give you an idea what that means, what Chip Hale was telling the infielders there. As he's kind of motioning to his elbow, that means that he wants his middle infielders to play halfway. We'll bring him in on the corners, but if you look at the middle infielders, they're not in their normal positions now. They're kind of halfway between. So if a ball is hit softly to the infield, they can go ahead and try to make a play at the plate and cut down that run. They're not in all the way and giving up a big hole in the infield. Now for a big inning, they're back far enough where they can cover their ground. But if the ball's hit softly, they'll be able to charge and have a play at the plate. If he can get it on the ground, boy, he pours a couple of pitches right over the black going to the count. McCutcheon waits on deck. Talking to Jeff before the game, he said, "Hey, you guys take care of me up there tonight." He said, "My friend, you took care of yourself when you were here. That's easy to do." Oh, no. Although I did not text Gracie last night during the telecast, I did watch it. And heard you speak about the home run he hit in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. you know, one of the many highlights of that season. Big home run. The catch he made, jumping over the wall in right field. And always handled himself the right way. Never found himself in that starting role. Front, here comes Justin up to Gracie Diamond left to play it on the hop. And a run scores. So Salazar with a single and an RBI coming back home. Well, they haven't hit it hard this inning. A couple of bloop singles with a runner on the move. And it doesn't always have to be pretty. What is it about the eighth inning for the Arizona Diamondbacks? I don't know. It's, it's not like it, it's not like they're giving up home runs. No, it's been it's been interesting. Put it that way. 83 runs allowed in the eighth inning alone, far and away more than anyone in Major League Baseball. And there's, there's no explaining it. There's no, there's no secret to it. it. It is what it is. Number two on that list is that one kicks away. Behind the 83 runs is 56 runs allowed. Number two. Really? There is no explaining it, but it's wild. It is one, yeah. Is. So we as we as baseball players or ex-baseball players or men, members of an organization think to ourselves, okay, well, how do you fix it? Well, you, you don't. I mean, what do you do? Well, I have a, a simple suggestion. I've heard an old friend of mine who coaches college baseball. His suggestion is pitch better. That's a great idea. That's a good idea. I kid, obviously. Uh, yeah, that's what they want to do. Of course. They're not trying to give up the runs. And I'm sure defense has played a role as well. Well, and it's not one guy. No. So that's, you know, that's the thing. 
McCutcheon gives that one a ride. Salazar bangs into his old teammate. He is safe. An RBI for McCutcheon. And another run here, and it's eight to three. AJ Hinch is out to make a pitching change. As the eighth inning unfortunately strikes again. Jack Wilson siding in that dugout, not in the starting lineup tonight. Leo is done. More after this from Chase. Cast. And don't forget if you're between the ages of 8 and 14. I would love to announce a ball game with Gracie and I. Now you can. Grab a parent, log on to kidcaster.com for all the information. On Sunday, we'll welcome in 11 year old Lily Sandblom from Scottsdale. Lily, whatever you do on Sunday, just, just speak your mind anytime that Gracie is trying to speak. Anytime. Just jump in Feel there. Feel free to interrupt him. It sounds way too much anyway. So just do that. Just do it. Scott Schoenweiss goes to work for the 35th time this year. Infield now drawn all the way in. Elwin Young takes high. 1 0 of the count. All right, Manny, let's pick it up here. Got to get some outs. You've been moping around here for the last couple of innings. We got to pick it up. You know, they play 27 outs here. That's exactly you right. You never know. We've had a lot of, a lot of big comebacks this year. Sure. Around the league. Around baseball. I mean, 10 runs, 11 runs. Huh. You never know. Over the top of the slider, one and two, the count. Hot shot, pass runs into left field. Everyone was drawn in a bit. Young drives in a run and another one. Unfortunately, here in the eighth inning, and it's 9 3. It's one of those plays. As a third baseman, you just have to make a stab at it. There's no time to think, there's no time to step. Got to try to throw the glove out in front of it and knock it down at least. Unfortunately, that time, Mark Reynolds came up empty. A little in between hop that didn't come up for him, and it scooted in the left. That happens. Oh. 
Boy, this gentleman really a story as you see that one. Replay that play in his mind. He is a story, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, you get to this point where you're talking about in your Pirates debut, second cup of coffee in the big leagues, as that one is buried in, and you start doing what he is doing. Oh. Uh oh, is better said. This is his 19th game. He now has 10 home runs, 15 RBIs. You're getting one of those grooves where you're seeing the ball. Well, yeah, granted, he's a big guy. He's got good power to both fields. We saw it last night from the double he hit to left field, and the ball that. He drove another ball to left field tonight that Romero went up the wall to catch and then of course the home run he pulled to right field. He has tied a Pirates record. For the most home runs hit in the month of July. These are his first at bats as a Pirate. He has tied a record with 10. Don Clendenin back in 1966. Really? I mean, how about this debut? Yeah with all the. The power hitters over the. History of the Pirates. The 2 2. Pitches in. Let me tell you something else. He untied himself. Others that have homered nine times in July. Reggie Sanders, good friend of this show, did it in 03. Brian Giles in 02. And Willie Stargell in hmm. 79 and 66. Folks, that's a debut. Yeah, that's, that's quite a role right there. Reaches out in the left field. And he retains that story earlier about bending that umpire's ear for an entire ball game in Wrigley Field. Tim Welke, he knows what it's like to deal with the, the smiling and the not smiling <laughs> ball player. The harder part of this job is dealing with people. It's dealing with the situations. Don't let a small situation become a, a major uh, a major situation where it's going to lead to ejections, if if at all possible. You know, there's misdemeanors out there and there's felonies. Felonies, the guy's going to get ejected. It's perfect, isn't it? No, it's great. I shut down the line. That's Ryan Dolman. Rolls around the corner. Nice job by Romero playing and getting it back in. After Jones is retired. Omit his second hit of the night. Two for five on the evening. Nice swing pulling his hands in and getting inside the baseball to keep it fair down the left field line. You know he said it right there you deal with personalities you deal with. Everybody's different. All umpires are different too. There's certain places you can go with an umpire and certain places you can't depending on that particular guy. So in Tim Welke's world if I listen and. I'm kind of interpreting that would have been a misdemeanor what you did that day. Yeah it was it was. You, know, you speak your mind. You weren't that, throwing that's things. Oh, no. 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 Yeah, there's. It depends on the umpire too. There's a. When I first came to the big leagues, there was an umpire, a very well respected umpire. Pyre, his name's Dutch Renner. Sure. You could yell at Dutch, scream at Dutch, and he would just simply look at you and say, "Well, I felt that ball was a strike." <laughs> and here's why I felt that was a strike. Matt. I felt across the plate, uh, you know, be at, at knee level. Although he caught it low, I felt that was a strike. Other umpires, you open your mouth and they can say, "Uh, -uh I don't want to hear it." Depends on the personality of that umpire. So you you know as the more you play you know where to go and who to who to say things to and who you can say th to things to and who you can't. Outside three and oh the count. It all you know it depends on the game too. You may be able to say a little bit more to an umpire in, a, in the playoffs or in the World Series. Mm. Because as we've heard, they don't want to be a factor in the game, especially in that situation. They understand the adrenaline, the emotion that ties into games that mean everything. Sure.
the 3-1. Three, 3 and 2 the count as that one grabs the outside. There's things that people just don't that don't understand about umpiring crews even at this level. They pack their own bags. They make their own flight arrangements. They fly commercially. If they miss their flight, they got to wait for another one. It's not an easy job. We'll hear more of this kind of stuff that Matt's telling us about tomorrow in depth. As that one is inside, that's ball four. Part of a ball game that has Ross Ohlendorf on the mound for the Pittsburgh Pirates and Doug Davis. He's due for a good one. He's had a tough, a couple of tough ones back to back, and with the year in which he's hovered around 3-2 with his ERA, you can expect a good one tomorrow. And then Virgil Vasquez against Max Scherzer. That is on Sunday to wrap up the series. Then Philadelphia Phillies come to town. That's an exciting club. It's going to be an exciting series. Look forward to seeing all of you out here. That one on the ground and a foul ball took a took a right turn on it. The other part of it too, and we finished the thought maybe for tonight on our men in black. Something else comes up. You have Tim Welke and you have Jim Reynolds out there working. And then the names we mentioned, James Hoy and Todd Tishner, move around sometimes from crew to crew. These are vacation relief guys. So it's Angel Hernandez and Bill Welke, Tim's brother, usually on that crew. So you don't think those two gentlemen, Hoy and Tishner, really want to do the senior members of that crew proud? Sure. In a series like this one. Sure. And you and on that same thought, you know, I had a situation in Colorado where a young umpire made a call and the crew chief stepped right in the middle of it, Gary right Darling. in front, and would not allow a discussion to even take place between that young umpire and a manager. Well, I'll give you a little behind the scenes. James Hoy, Todd Tishner, that man right there. Before the two gentlemen sat down for their interview, they said, all right, let's just, if you can, just keep it to straightforward questions. And uh, let's not take them on point to anything. It looked out for him. Yeah. Great to us. He was wonderful. You could tell how warm he was, but then when it was time for the younger guys, he looked out for him. Sure. No problem. One and two, the count. Bases full of them. Brandon Moss is the ninth member of the Pittsburgh Pirates to hit in this inning. The eighth inning. The bases are loaded and another run scores. There may be no explanation. But this eighth inning this year, I wish they could find an explanation. Those gentlemen down there on the telephones. Has it been worse at home, too? It's, it sure seems like it. Well, yes. I mean, there certainly have been moments to forget. Four runs in. And now Blaine Boyer, who pitched well yesterday, has pitched a lot better of late. He has to get loose. One and zero. Oh, the count. Yeah, what do you do? It's a great thing about baseball. There is no formula. No textbook. There's no way to combat things like this. You just got to keep going. Two and oh, the count. And Andy LaRoche, here's what you're talking about, steps out. Come on now. That wasn't a strike because every pitch to these guys are important pitches. No sure. matter the score. I grab the corner, two and one, ground ball and a foul ball. Scott, in his last five appearances, has worked three innings and given up six earned runs. Opponents in that time. And a 385 clip against him. Well, as a manager, you'd like to see your 
your players regardless of the score keep grinding like LaRoche 2 and 0 he gets a pitch that doesn't think is a strike he's not happy about it. I would agree that eighth inning not a good thing this year. Ouch. Miguel Montero, unfortunately, just hasn't been enough tonight, Matty. No, it's, it hasn't been pretty, hasn't been loud hits necessarily from the Pittsburgh Pirates, but they've, they've taken advantage. They've created opportunities and taken advantage. And like I said, they came in hot. They came in with some confidence, winning their last two series against two very good clubs right now, and they've, you know, they're playing well. Ah, uh, see, they got the sun shades given away by our good friends with Sports 620 KTAR. And you put them right there in your windshield, protector dash, but they're using them as rally sun hats. I could use one of those when I go outside. Ah. Never I shouldn't what, have said that. Never know what to say to that. You now, if you agree, you're in trouble. If you don't, you're no fun. 0 oh 2 the count. What would you like for me to do? Well, there was a time not too long ago where there was an, an initiative here at the ballpark uh -huh. about, about propeller hats and my name really? associated. Oh, it's horrible. That pitch is high. I'm glad you told me that. Guess who started it? Um, Mark Ritz. Good guess. Unbelievable. I think it's a good idea. Chavez saying, look, I wanted to come in the game earlier, and I'm showing you this. Now, I've been hot for two innings now. I'm finally getting a chance to get out here and pitch. Never get any time the D-back scores six runs or more. Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between 4 and 6 o'clock at the following day at participating locations. I got to get one of those. Miguel Montero takes a pitch that is high. Jesse Chavez. He's not messing around, is he? No, not at all. Oh, Hardball, rear back and throw it. 25 years old out of Victorville, California. And that one runs away. Everyone loves their sunshades. 
really their their need, but they work best in your car. <laughs> Ninety six over the outside. Well, yeah, they're not real effective tonight. Not a whole lot of sun. Tomorrow, though. Oh yeah. It's one hundred and ninety outside. Is that what it's going to be? Uh, I was wanting to check. It sure feels like it. Fouled off. Of course, big time sports personality and friend of this show, Dave Burns of Sports 620 KTAR. How do you do here on the first pitch? Oh. He got it there. Oh, Burnsy. Not a big follow through right there. It's called guiding the baseball. Oh, he got it, did he? Yeah, can you imagine? Boy, getting over there, LaRoche by the visiting dugout where you get no help, and he stays under it. So you weren't a fan of, of the Burns toss there. No, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. No, of the throw. I know you're a fan. Of, I'm a fan of, of Burns's as well. I can feel for him. Can you imagine if he bounces that ball? Mm -hmm. How many people listen to KTAR every day, and every single crew that comes in and does their show, they're going to mention it every day. You bet. So he has it's like the president the president can't ba can't bounce it or he's going to get ridiculed same with Bernsey right here. He got the oh. lead arm out there. Yeah, what, I don't know. The where, lead arm was there. Where, where's he looking? You got to pick up your target don't you. I'm sure there were photogs out. You know the press the media had gathered behind John Weitzel. Yeah. Form was not good. Not good form. All right. Well, hey, it sounds it, like he's going to get buried anyway. No, I don't, it, <laughs> it doesn't have to be pretty. It was effective. It worked. That one skitters on to the backstop. And it's, so the count one and two on par. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty, kind of like skitters. Same thing. So he's he's done. No, it's, no. Bad no way I'll said, take the blame for this one again. That's a terrible form. <laughs> that one has popped up. I'm behind you, Bernsey. Don't worry about it, pal. It's not me. Bernsey. Bernsey. Where are you looking? Look at that. <laughs> Way better than Doug Franz would have done. Way better. <laughs> he would have been terrible. Have you back of the ballpark? Diamondbacks baseball presented by Blue Bell Ice Cream. It's the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Arizona Diamondbacks as we roll along. Mark McClune, Matt Williams, Darren Sutton, and of course, a lot of our bosses coming around. Executive week on Quest 
D backs live our post game show Josh Burns and Derek Hall over the next couple of days Peter Woodfork who helps and assist Josh in building these Diamondbacks Colin Maxey and uh, Brent Stellick will be joining us as well a bit of the business side on the back end ticket question uh, we will uh, have a chance to engage Josh Burns tonight. Yeah. Owen won the count. Lots of questions for Josh, huh? It's interesting. You know, it's the future, the possibility over the next few days. Look out over there. Mickey just had to hop around by that camera. You all right, pal? He's all right. Mick's light on his feet now. Josh Weitzel is in there at first base. Jed Tracy is over at third. And a chase of a fastball up and away. And Vasquez goes down. Left fielder Jeff Salazar. And here is Salazar. Single to a run back in the eighth inning. Is fouled off. You know, we have a fine tradition. We really encourage fans to bring signs. The man who sits in your seat, look at that, Tom Candiotti. And we've encouraged folks to bring signs to support Candy Man. And they brought him out. They love him. There he is, the Candy Man, the signs all around the park for him. But now we have to take it to the next level because you folks listened, you brought him. As that one is swung on and missed. We need more signs. I don't know if I've told you folks this. And they need to be. Well, keep bringing Candy Ali signs, but we need some Matt Williams signs. Oh, no. We need some Matt Williams uh, signs at the ballpark. Oh, no. We don't need to go there. Folks, please. Well, do you know how we operate up here in the do, television booth? Please do not listen to him or his partner. No, no. You folks, I think, know by now our fine viewers, our loyal viewers, big time D backs fans and baseball fans. Redhead section, by the way, coming up on Tuesday. What we do up here is if you ask to not be on TV or to be on TV, we're doing the opposite. So you fans at home, do the opposite. Hot shot. Goodness gracious. Unbelievable play and just flat out reaction play there by Boyer. Thank goodness he's all right and fortunate it's an out. Uh, Self preservation about 55 feet from home plate. Okay, so I take it back. Pitchers are athletes. You're something. I'll take it all back. Oh, man. That like scary stuff comes back, makes a good pitch. Keep it together. You're all right. Out is the call. How about that tap dance job? James Hoy, he stepped back, got everything ready for the picture, and took the photo. Unbelievable tap dance play. We'll take a look at it when we come back.
certainly by Chad Tracy. Not an easy call by James Hoare. Little hesitation here and has to flip it. Flips it into the runner. Josh Weitzel. So you think you can dance. Wow. Nice going, big fella. That's a large man, too. James Hoy. Listen for the sound, watch the feet. That's exactly right. 10 to 3 the score. 1 and 0 the count to Josh Weitzel. Look forward to seeing you out here all weekend long. There's a 1 0 pitch. He's outside. Don't forget Sunday. Kids Sunday, Kids Day at Chase Field. This Sunday, the first 5,000 kids to the game receive a Dan Heron replica jersey t shirt courtesy of Majestic. 602 514 8400 or visit dbacks.com slash Sunday. That's right, your jersey. All over the uh, the backs of youngsters, Mr. Heron, as they head back to school here around the corner. Oh, that's right, kids. I said it. It's coming up. Back to school. Unbelievable. Summer gets shorter and shorter every year, right? They're even booing in the booth for that here. It does. Though, when they're back in school and growing those brains and catching up with old buddies, maybe went to cool off in the mountains or in San Diego somewhere. And they're back in school and they're told summer's over. And it's still 112. They're saying summer's not over at all. <laughs> I just have to go back to school. Make no bones about it. They can hang with, with mom and dad and, and the family for a while, but they itch to get back to school. Oh, I, I know how that works. Hey, man. Weitzel is erased. I got two of them that are ready as, as well. It's one of the favorite sights of summers. Now, Obviously at home first and foremost is seeing all those young faces at the ballpark putting rally caps on Opening up sunshades asking mom and dad for just one more run to the snack bar But even on the road it reminds all of us I think of home as a player You probably would look up even on the road and see youngsters and think about home. That's what it's all about, right? It's a great game Hardest game on the planet to play How busy they are. <laughs> <laughs> There's a young Mark Grace in attendance. <laughs> one, one the count. Oh, Gracie. Future big leaguer right there. <laughs> that pitch is low from Chavez. Fighting back a yawn, isn't he? <laughs> Base hit right field. Here's Alex Romero. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's a family show. Come on now. Keep that car shade on. <laughs> yeah, this game approaching. Three hours old. Well, it's almost over. Uh, you never know. For the Diamondbacks, you're pulling for a rally. Long inning here in the bottom of the ninth. Count and it turns into an out right after that. That one didn't rattle out of the glove. Oh, imagination. Look at that. I think I got him in my sights. <laughs> so now Stephen Drew.
Steven in that leadoff spot having another nice night. He's got a couple of doubles thrown out at third trying to stretch one into a triple. Since the start of the 08 season, Steven drew an 86 game as a leadoff hitter, batting 326 with an on base of 375 and 50 extra base hits. Back things down a little bit as they get together on the mound. Well, he ran out there to, to, to go over what they want to do to get Stephen Drew out here. Sometimes you just got to go over the plan. is there and the Pittsburgh Pirates roll tonight. They do their most damage, their most painful damage in that fateful eighth inning again. So Pittsburgh gets right back on track after winning a series against Milwaukee and San Francisco. The Pirates come to town and right now a game apiece. We'll do it again tomorrow. And we'll do it through the eyes of the men in black, the Major League Baseball umpires, Reynolds, Hoy, Welke, and Tishner. Those men in black Bumping fist. Let's get it to the post game show though with Josh out there right now.